Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, October 27th, 2021. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy to be joined by Mr. G. Scott Sr., a.k.a. the Buckeye Preacher. A lot to get into, sir. Let's start with C.J. Stroud. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, a few weeks ago, people were wondering, ah, oh, is, is this guy maybe, is there too much hype about him? Now, he's got the third best odds to win the Heisman Trophy, and he's looking like a stud. I know from talking to you, Not just a few weeks ago or months ago, you know, last year, you've always been high on this young man. You've been high on him for a long time. Tell the listeners maybe some stories about C.J. Stroud and where you see him right now. C.J. Stroud is playing with house money. When you go to the casino and you win right away and you had no idea, maybe you're with your significant other and you say, hey, honey, hold this and let me play with what I got. That's C.J. Stroud right now. I first saw C.J. Stroud down in Dallas. Texas at the opening and it was how he was going about things. And I thought to myself, this guy, this young man is way too cool for the moment. When you get in that moment, the lights are bright, it's shining. The, the, the whole deer in the headlights thing could stand out, but not with CJ Stroud. This dude was incredible down at the opening i remember he and my son after some of the games and were played they were playing chess and um my son had said uh dad this this dude is special i said i i know i see it and i was on that hype train when he was unknown when he was if you will kind of he was a three star and he had got the invite to the opening um, if I'm not mistaken, because it was just kind of a word of mouth, like, hey, check this kid out, out there, Rancho Cucamonga, I believe the school he was at. But C.J. Stroud was overshadowed by two giant names in DJ, uh, DJ Ukulele and um, uh, Bryce Young. Those were the two names in Southern California at the time. And then, oh, by the way, here's this C.J. Stroud guy. I think that I told you this earlier in the season, and we can come about it now. If I had to go into an alley and I was getting ready to fight some individuals, I'm not saying that C.J. Stroud is going to like be tough enough to fight everybody. What I am saying is, is C.J. Stroud won't be scared. He will not be nervous. And I think that the quarterback position comes down to an attitude of an even kill not to be scared of the moment, not to be too high, not to be too low. And I think what we are starting to see out of C.J. Stroud is just that, even keel. And I think he's been damn good. I don't think anybody will disagree with that. And so there's a lot of people say, yeah, but he was terrible in September. Can we hold up on that word terrible? And what do you define as terrible? If you want to say that he wasn't as experienced in September as he is now, fair. But terrible? I don't know about that word considering, if I'm not mistaken, oh, yeah, that's right. Those are his first three games in college football. So he had a little bit of hiccups. And you know what? I still thought he was really good in September. He threw for 484 yards against Oregon. Guess what? That was not the reason they lost the game was not C.J. Stroud. Yeah, he's playing better now. He'd be the first one to say it. But, yeah, he wasn't terrible. Was he great early in the year? No. I wouldn't say he was great. Now he's great, and it's so much fun to watch. Let me ask you this. With C.J. Stroud and the team in general, so early in the year they have the the loss in the second week. People are doubting them. They're saying all these things, you know, all the Ohio State's not who we thought they'd be. C.J. Stroud's not who we – thought he would be that galvanized I think these guys and that that motivated them 
now, especially after blowing the doors off Indiana, 54 to seven. I kind of had a good feeling going into the game. I didn't have that good of a feeling, G. 54 to seven. I mean, I know they were down to their third and fourth string quarterback at some point, but that's a solid defense. And Ohio State just could do whatever they wanted to, just like they did against Maryland. They could score whenever they wanted to, however they wanted to, until they called the dogs off. Man, you're, you know sports so well. You're around the Seahawks. You just know sports so well in general. How does this team now keep its edge? Because now everybody, like myself included, is saying, look how great these guys are. Look how great this team is. How do they keep their edge? September 11th, they got dumped and stood up at the altar. You understand me? That was very hurtful. They had all these plans. You had They had honeymoon plans. They had plans of a, a white picket fence. They had all these ideas of vacations in Maui and all these family ideas. And no, no, no. On September 11th, at the shoe, they were stood up at the altar. No show. Families there. Tickets already done. The reception, the food is ready. Nobody showed up. They lost. And here's what happened at that moment. I told you before on the show, and I'll say it again. Everybody had to learn that you just take one game at a time. You can't think about the honeymoon until you get married. And if you get stood up at the altar, there is no honeymoon. So in this case, when the Buckeyes lose to the Ducks, everybody, you, me, fans, team, coaches, everybody says, whoa, okay, the next game is going to be Tulsa. And then you saw how that kind of started, if you will, right? Uh, was it Tulsa or was it Akron? No, it was Tulsa. It was then Tulsa. it was Akron. Tulsa and Akron. But the bottom line is what I believe that this team has learned and everybody has learned is that you take it just one game at a time, DB, right? You, you, you have no idea. There is nothing. You don't look past Penn State this coming up Saturday. I don't care if Penn State loses to Illinois. I don't care if they beat Illinois. It does not matter because Penn State is a good football team. Penn State has done, has done, it played very well. I think uh, Coach Franklin is a very good coach. I'm sure he knows who he's going to play this weekend. I'm sure he knows he's not playing against the University of Illinois. I'm sure he knows he is going to be playing at the shoe. I think he's a very good coach. It is all about taking each game one at a time. And last thing, what I think the Buckeyes did was they woke up a sleeping dog, right? There's no doubt about it. There's talent. There's talent. Your kids have talent. My kid, anybody's kid. All of our children have talent. I'm just trying to make this relatable to everyone, okay? But sometimes we don't always use that talent whether it's in football, whether it's in school or in band or just flat out life, we sometimes can just look at our talent and just take it for granted. And if you want to maybe sometimes say that the Buckeyes during that game against Oregon, did they take their talent for granted? I don't know. But I do know this. I know you see them playing a whole lot different now. Is it because they all of a sudden found talent? No, I think what happened is, is they found how to use that talent. And I just want to simplify that and use that talent on all facets of the game, offense, defense, special teams. And oh, by the way, when the defense is playing well, the offense plays better. Everything is connected. You can't just say, oh, this unit isn't playing well. So that's the reason why the team's not doing well. All of it, every facet of the game is connected to the team. We'll get to the Penn State game in a second. I, I want to ask you real quick, and I respect the fact if, if you can't say anything about this or very little, how is G Jr. doing? Can we expect to see him against the Nittany Lions? He did not make the trip to Bloomington. Yeah, he's, he's good. Um, we don't know yet, but we'll, we'll see where he's at in the cup, you know, week or so, but uh, he's good. Thank you for asking, brother. Appreciate you. Good, good, good. All right, let's talk about the big game this Saturday at the Horseshoe. Nittany Lions coming to town. Not as big as we thought it would be. It feels like just three weeks ago, Penn State was ranked second in the country, G, because they still were. Still big, still big. It's, great. it's still it, oh. big. It's still big. It's still big. I, I, I don't even know what you're going to ask me, 
but I know that there's people that's thinking and saying it. It is still a big game. Here's why it's big. If Ohio State loses, is it big? Then damn it, it's a big game. It's it's a big game. If they lose any of these games, it's it's big because they're out. And I'm telling you though, there Ohio State has a rival. There's no doubt about it. No, nobody nobody disputes who the rival is. We all know who it is. But if there's a number two, there's no dispute about that either. There's no dispute about that. And Penn State looks at Ohio State as their main rival, which that that's why Penn State a lot of times plays above their head, in my opinion, against Ohio State. Um, but Ohio State's number two rival is Penn State. So I want to ask you from a recruiting standpoint, because you hear, you know, this yes. is a big recruiting weekend. And I'll hear people say this could make the difference with this recruit. Um, and maybe it can, you know, if it's like tied between two schools. Uh, from a yeah. parent's perspective, a, a big recruiting weekend like this, let's say your son's on the fence and he comes, he comes to a, you know, a game like this and, and gets his socks blown off or the opposite happens. Um, just how big, how, how much influence can a weekend like this have on a recruit? It had zero influence when Purdue upset uh, the Buckeyes, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I'll admit something. There's some there's some questions I'll probably have a good answer to. Dave, this is one I don't have a good answer to. I, I, I finally and, stumped and, you. I knew it happened eventually. You, you, yeah, you stumped me, man, because I can't relate to this. I don't know. I don't know how to. Now, don't get me wrong. I do think that there's trends, right? You can see trends. Like you can see, oh, this program, you can look and see where it's going. You can kind of look at things. I'm I'm able to do that. But if a team loses, gets the doors blown off, would that make you say, oh, you know what? Purdue beat Ohio State. I don't know, son. Maybe we should think about not going to, to Ohio State. Looks like Ohio State not taking football very – you know what I mean? Like <laughs> – one one of the things that's happening right now, not just in college football, in pro football, high school football, the parity, the parity in football, it's something now. Like on any given Saturday or Sunday, someone can lose. Hey, if I would have told you at the beginning of the year that the Cincinnati Bengals would be better than the Cleveland Browns, you would say, now, I probably have made somebody mad. With that, but don't be mad at me. I don't play for neither team. That's their business. But what I'm trying to say is, is on getting any given Saturday or Sunday, you just never know. So um, I, I don't have an answer to that. I don't know how recruiting decisions are based off of one game, but I do know recruiting decisions are based off of environments. A Saturday night game in Columbus? Are you kidding me? Prime time football, oh baby, that's huge. That's I, huge. I think you did give an answer, even though you 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 know pretended like I stumped you. I mean, you basically said what you know. We agree on this. Like, yeah, it, it can help if it's a dead tie, which it rarely is. Usually, a kid's leaning one way or the other. It might be fifty one forty nine or sixty forty. Usually, he's he's leaning one way or the other. Very rarely is it fifty fifty. I guess in the cases, if it's 50-50, it can make the difference. In most cases, it's just fun, and it can like reaffirm what you're thinking. It's not going to be the deciding factor in recruiting one game itself, like you mentioned with uh, G Junior's exam a, with, with Purdue. What's, what's a kid thinking about when they're deciding if they want to go to uh, Penn State or Ohio State? Let's be real, right? If th There is no way in the world a kid said, okay, let's see. One is a dominant winning program. And the other one is a good program. The only thing they're deciding on is this. If they're if it's between Penn State and Ohio State, they're deciding, well, if I go to Penn State, I have an opportunity to play right away. If I go to Ohio State, it's a gamble. That's what you're thinking about. That's what you're talking about. Those are real conversations. Now, I just thought of this. Wait a minute. That game was at Purdue. Was G there as a, as a Purdue recruiter? Was he there as an Ohio State guy just checking it out? We weren't even at the game. We watched the game. Oh, I thought I thought you meant. Okay, I got you. I see what you're saying. No, no, I, I see I, what I'm you're just, saying. I'm just, I, I, I yeah, thought, yeah, okay, yeah. I got you. I got you. Okay, I, I misconstrued you there. Okay, I want to ask you about the defense. Okay, I I do not know what to make of Ohio State's defense. I will say this: I'm encouraged. I know I know that they're trending in the right direction. I know that 
They've gone from 120th in the country in total defense to 48th in the country in total defense. I know that. Mm -hmm. All good Mm -hmm. things. They played some Mm -hmm. terrible offenses lately. Indiana down to their really their third and fourth string quarterback for the vast majority of the game. Tuttle really only played the first drive and they scored a touchdown. Um, Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing defensively, but I mean, their best tests are yet to come. Where are you at with this defense, G? The defense goes as the D-line goes. I learned that from Pete Carroll here at the Seahawks. I learned that in Super Bowl 48 when the best offense was going against the best defense in Super Bowl 48, the Denver Broncos against the Seattle Seahawks. I learned firsthand I had never seen Peyton Manning look so normal and so human. What happened? Oh, he had never seen a D-line like that. He had never seen a pass rush run like that. That's why after they got beat so bad, that's why John Elway mimicked that D-line and wanted to get a D-line just like that, and they were able to beat the Carolina Panthers. Now let me talk about what we're starting to see now with this defense. Our defense, correct me if I'm wrong, the D-line, the upperclassmen, they were a little dinged up, a little banged up a little bit earlier on in the season. But something's interesting now. So the young guys early in the season were able to get a lot of reps, right? Great. You got to see JT out there. You got to see the young fella, Tyler Williams, out there. You got to see – what's my man uh, over there on the edge? Um, Jack Sawyer. Jack, Jack Sawyer. But My bad, Jack Sawyer. Great player. You got to see him. So these youngsters are getting the playing time while the, while the, while the, while the OGs, the o, you know, they – they had a little injuries a little bit, set out a couple games. Now, what you're starting to see is the OGs are back, right? And the youngsters that was getting that time, they also, they got reps and confidence. So now you have a D-line group that is rocking. Now, I mean, this is very simple arithmetic. One plus one is two. If you look at a defense, ask about the D-line, period. We can go to the linebackers all day till you blow in the face. You can go to the secondary. Don't nothing scare an offense like a dog nasty D line. So, what you to make of it, this defense, and with the continued improvement that we are seeing, I believe that is truthfully happening because of the D line. With respect to the rest of the defense, I'm just one of those that believes that the defense starts up front. He is Mr. G. Scott Sr., the Buckeye Preacher. You can see why we love having him on the show. He always comes strong. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time, as always. Thank you, all the listeners out there, for tuning in the show. We appreciate that as well. Hope everyone has a great day. Let's try that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. (laughs) 